Okay, I'm trying this again. I don't care if anybody's able to join me or not. I really, um, ju I just wanted to share um, a couple of points on a video that I just watched on YouTube from, and I'm probably not going to say her name right, but it's uh, Sheila Ra Rye Gregoire, and um, I really like her content that I just recently discovered on Twitter, um, but I found an old video of hers that is called uh, Why Women Don't Need to Wait to Be in the Mood, and in the video, they cite some research uh, from the University of British Columbia that says that essentially um, women generally are not in the mood before they start sex, that they actually get in the mood as they start, so the whole video is intended to encourage women to really, uh, especially because this is a Christian video, it's intended to encourage wives to stretch themselves to make an effort to have sex even if they're tired or not in the mood in marriage. This is good advice. However, it is in balance and there's um, a, 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 there's a, two significant issues that come from an imbalance like this. And um, I can testify to this uh, personally uh, based on my experience with 18 years of marriage to somebody who successfully concealed a secret sex life for the entire duration of the marriage. So I did do my due diligence to stretch myself and put forth an effort um, in, in the bedroom. Um, I'm sure my ex would probably say it wasn't up to par for what, but the, the point is, is that I did stretch myself and I did make an effort because I do recognize how important sex is in marriage. But here's the problem. First Corinthians chapter seven, verses one through six talks about this issue and it never talks about it in isolation with what the husband needs versus what the wife needs. It always talks about it in this mutuality and this reciprocation. Um, so uh, I like the New English translation. It talks about it in terms of sexual rights. So if I am attending uh, to uh, my, mar I'm doing my marital duty and attending to my husband's sexual rights in marriage, but he is ignoring mine. Um, there's two things there. Number one, it's uh, going to leave a woman feeling like a prostitute. And number two, um, it's actually evidence that um, it's a huge red flag that a wife should not ignore. If you, uh, as a wife, are consistently making the effort in the bedroom with your husband and he is not reciprocating that by likewise making the effort uh, to be romantic when he's too tired and doesn't uh, isn't in the mood to be romantic, there's a problem there and there's an imbalance and it's it's what I learned the hard way. It's probably a sign that he's pouring all his romantic energy elsewhere in uh, several uh, other places, probably um, online and in real life as well. So I just, I don't want um, believers to be naive about that. Um, those are issues that can be exposed and addressed. And some people are able to successfully repair their marriage after um, stuff like that. But even if you're not, um, you're better off getting to the truth rather than living in denial and soldiering on in marriage and in the bedroom. So yes, I affirm this the message of this video that women should make an effort in marriage in the bedroom, but not to the exclusion or in the absence um, or in isolation from men also making an effort in the bedroom. And that's really what I wanted to share with you is that... Um, more and more as I study the scriptures on this topic, I am convinced that God really has mapped out um, something that really is much more um, designed to be um, a submitting to one another. It's a mutual submission. It's a give and take and it's a sharing. It's not top down and um, he has needs, so I'm going to su suppress mine. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. I hope that you um, your marriages are strengthened by seeing what's in these blind spots and in these potholes so that you can avoid them. God bless you and your marriages. Thank you so much for your time. God bless.